One of the core gameplay hallmarks of modern stealth games is the tracking system, where you can see enemies or other objects through walls, which I like to call stealth vision. There are many ways we can implement the effect, and today we are going to see one way of doing it in Universal Render Pipeline with Shadergraph. All my videos are made possible by my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate your support, and if you're interested in bonus goodies, then check out the link in the description where you'll also find a GitHub repository for this project. Time to get started. With renderer features in URP, we can force objects in certain layers to render on top of everything else if they are behind a wall. First, we'll need to set up the layer and add at least one object to test the effect. I'm using this character mesh as an example. To add the layer, click on any object and go to Layer, Add Layer, then create a new layer called Render on Top. Then assign all your stealth objects to this layer. In a real game, you might build some system which lets the player tag enemies by looking at them, like in Metal Gear Solid 5, but I'll just focus on the shader part today. Once you've assigned the objects, find your forward renderer asset, which should be in the settings folder if you're using a brand new URP project. The first thing we need to do here is disable normal rendering of the entire render on top layer, which we can do using the two filtering dropdowns near the top. On both the opaque and transparent layer masks, deselect the render on top layer and keep everything else ticked. The stealth tagged objects should pop out of existence. Now let's deal with rendering the render on top layer when objects are behind walls. Go to Add Renderer feature, Render Objects, which lets us override certain parts of the rendering loop. I'm going to name it Highlight Opaque and set the event to After Rendering Opaques. Inside the filters dropdown, the queue needs to be opaque and the layer mask should contain only Render on Top. Essentially, these settings mean we will attempt to render the opaque geometry in the Render on Top layer after all other opaque geometry has finished rendering. In the Overrides dropdown, we will add some crucial behavior. First, we will drag a test material onto the material slot. I'm using an unlit white material for now. Then in depth, which you should tick, we will modify the depth test. We want to render only if the depth of the render on top object is greater than the depth of any existing opaque object, so change the depth test to greater and make sure right depth is left unticked. Once you've done that, you should see the objects again, but only the parts that are behind a wall. Let's now add back the normal rendering of the layer when the object is not behind a wall. Add another render objects feature, name it normal opaque, then give it the same event, queue, and layer mask settings as the first one. This time in overrides, we don't want to override the material, so leave it blank, and set the depth test to less equal. We want to write the depth value, so tick that too. If we pan the camera now, the object should appear pure white when behind a wall and normal otherwise. If you are planning on using transparent objects in the render on top layer, we will need to create two more render objects features in the same way as the first two, except the event should be after rendering transparent instead, and the queue should be transparent. I named mine Highlight Transparent and Normal Transparent accordingly. Now that we've built this system, let's also write a shader to replace the unlit white one. I'm actually going to create two. One's a static shader that highlights edges of a mesh, and the other's more dynamic and animates over time. I'll right click in the project view and go to Create, Shader, Universal Render Pipeline, Lit Shader Graph, and name the first one Stealth Vision. Both the shaders we create will need to be transparent, so go to the graph settings and change the surface to transparent. The first shader is straightforward. We want to add an emissive Fresnel effect to the object, so start by adding a color property called Base Color and make sure it is HDR enabled. Then add a float property called Fresnel Power, which will control the size of the glowing edges. Drag the Fresnel Power property onto the graph and use it in the power pin of a Fresnel Effect node, then multiply it together with the Base Color property. Output the result into the Emission output on the master stack, but then use a Split node and output the alpha components of the color to the alpha block on the master stack. And that's the shader done. We can test it out by creating a material with the shader, setting the color to a high intensity red, and dragging it onto the material override on the render objects feature in place of the white material from before. And now objects in the render on top layer show up with this cool outline effect. It works best on organic objects like this one since it uses Fresnel. Large flat faces like those on a cube won't look great with this effect. The second shader, which is also a lit shader graph, is more complicated. I called it lava lamp because an earlier iteration looked pretty similar to a lava lamp. We'll need to set the surface to transparent and then add the same base color property as the first shader with HDR support. This effect will be animated over time, so also add a float property called speed, 
which I'll give a default value of 0.25. Drag it onto the graph and multiply it by a time node's standard time output. If we modulo this by 1, then it will count up and loop every time this value reaches 1. We're going to use a noise cloud to define the pattern used by this effect, and we're going to do a trick I really like by applying two thresholds and picking noise values between the two. For that, add two more float properties called noise scale and thickness. We will add a simple noise node onto the graph and use the noise scale in its scale pin, then output it to the in pin of two step nodes. Then we will apply the two thresholds. The first threshold is the modulo clock we just made, which we output to the edge pin of the first step node. For the second threshold, add the thickness property to the modulo clock, and then output it to the second step node's edge pin. Now we have two thresholds, and one is using a higher value than the other. If we take the second one and use a 1 minus node to reverse it, then multiply the two together, we end up with a thin slice of the noise values, which is what we wanted. We can output that to the alpha on master stack, then multiply it by base color and output that to a mission. You can leave it there, but if you want a more interesting noise pattern, then go back to the start of the graph and use the position node in world space as the input to a polar coordinates node, then use that for the UV slot on simple noise. Swap out the material used in both the highlight renderer features, and you should see the render on top objects come to life behind the wall. If you want to see more effects which make use of renderer features like this one, try my tutorial on Impossible Geometry where I use render objects to override the stencil settings. Thanks for watching.